okay? Because I, um, because I, uh, so somebody I met uh, on LinkedIn, like a, uh, somebody works at Google, like a very cool person, but she just sent me a message, she couldn't make it, whatever. So yeah, so, so Mark is a friend of a friend and, uh, and uh, also a friend of ours at this point. Shahid uh, is the artist that uh, will be presenting uh, this evening uh, a little bit. Jesse is a climber, a climber who likes to carry a photo camera with him. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tristan is a massive nerd uh, and uh, uh, some sort of uh, what? Geek, not nerd. Oh, geek. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, geek. Okay. Oh. What's the difference? Ciao, Isi. I, what's the difference? Uh, geeks have sex. So what? Geeks have sex. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. A very valuable information, Tristan. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I'm on and it. there is Issy, who's got... Uh, Oh, well, I, I always think about the Nikita thing uh, when uh, I have to say something about you, Issy, because it's so like nice. So Issy, we like one day we had a round in which we each one said the uh, um, like what's the superhero that we uh, look up to, like what kind of a hero if we could be, we would be, and uh, Issy said the Nikita, the sniper, like uh, so so yeah. Um, so Shahid, uh, if you could be a superhero, do you, who would you be, uh, mm. just to break ice? I mean, does it have to be a superhero or it could be uh, someone? But how about, uh, yeah, how about someone uh, you, someone imaginary or real uh, that you... I don't know. Um, I am very fond of uh, uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But would you want to be him? That would be great, actually. Okay. Not now. <laughs> Not now, since he's dead, but yeah. Okay. What about you, Mark? Um, good question. Um, I think as a kid, I was very much into Batman and Spider-Man. So it would be always one of these two Yeah. Uh, that I would like, yeah, uh, choose and then play. Um, Probably one of them. Okay. I'll, st I'll stick to Spidey, I think. Spidey, Spider-Man. You know, I, <laughs> I reevaluated the guy a lot lately because he's, he's so... Like, there is a point uh, in the latest film where he's uh, battling against uh, Doctor Strange, who's one of my favorites, by the way. And he says, oh, you know what's cooler than, uh, what's cooler than magic? Math! And then he, like, makes, uh, like, a super... Uh, uh web and like traps him and i love these things i say yo cooler than magic math i'm like Phew. so i i really <laughs> love that uh, it's very really passionate like, about yeah, the it's, knowledge it's, uh yes. tristan did you did you change um superhero or, or uh mm. well, just... well currently currently it's the grand inquisitor from this obi-wan series <laughs> well <laughs> how modest of you huh I think, didn't he die in in second episode yeah but the thing is he's also in star wars rebels which is a couple of years after and we're still there's still a couple of episodes missing right okay uh jesse um not a superhero but there's a new character in a book my friend wrote named james reese he's like a former navy seal and just does all kinds of crazy stuff okay Pretty interesting Okay, and uh, Isi, will you stick uh, with the, the Nikita or? Totally, although I have to say also from the super, because like Nikita is like kind of a human hero in a way. I mean, just she's like female spy slash assassin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but from the superheroes, I, I always like Batman. First of all, I learned to read with the Batman comics. So this was the oh. first thing I read. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why I love it a lot. But also Batman for me, I always liked him because he's a real human and exactly he's smart. That's why I liked it. I mean, he's oh, real he's human really... and he's, yeah. So, wow. Okay. Um, so I'm, uh, 
I like Dr. Manhattan. I like, so, so two of my favorite people is, are Dr. Manhattan and Dr. Strange. And, uh, and then I was inspired by what Tristan said at some point that he wants to be, you know, the future Tristan. And so I like Dr. Love uh, for me, which is actually how they used to call me at Cornell uh, during my PhD. <laughs> it's true. So, so I was like playing with this thing. I'm like, I really like the title. Uh, so I'll go for Dr. Love uh, in my case, who's a little bit in between uh, Dr. Strange and Dr. Manhattan, if you're familiar with the characters. Um, no? So mm. Dr. Manhattan, Manhattan is basically, uh, you know Dr. Strange, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Manhattan is a character from uh, the Night Watch, I think they're called. And he's a guy who, who's a physicist who got disintegrated into um, in, 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 um, during an experiment. There was a, like a, a ray of light got disintegrated and then he found a way to reassemble himself. But, but as he did that, he gained absolute knowledge and mastery over matter. Like he can do anything. He can, he can walk on the sun, dismember people like this, create life. It's a god. Uh, so he's not even a superhero. He's like a god. So I, I uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, yeah, I'm a megalomaniac, uh, probably, uh, to some extent. Uh, nah. more yoga that would be the way oh, right oh antonio why would you say that uh so uh with that said um can i guys entertain you with uh, like a smaller centering exercise before we start uh so we do like a five four minutes uh because uh so if you mark do you meditate um, uh, every now and then but not as much as i would like to so okay Yeah. Okay, so here we uh, always do like a four minute, four to five minutes meditation, depending depending on how I'm feeling it. Today mm -hmm. it's four, mm -hmm. uh, and I experiment stuff. So, uh, but we start uh, always like the same way, like we breathe in, we breathe out, then we uh, and we close our eyes. So, and you can close your camera if you want, okay? For uh, these four minutes. Um, and uh, we start uh, breathing slowly. And, um, and then I give you a choice. Either you pick a part of your body on which you want to focus your attention, be this uh, tip of your nose or your belly, or you just uh, rest in uh, awareness and let your uh, thoughts go and witness. So pick uh, whichever way you want and uh, I'll see you in uh, three minutes, four minutes because uh, I'm not gonna say anything else.
and uh, slowly but surely come back and uh, gently open your eyes and uh, show us your pretty face at some point when you're ready. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, this is gone. Uh, but um, well, um, so Shahid and Mark, uh, uh, we normally start uh, like we warm up a little bit. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions around, uh, seemingly unrelated to what we're going to talk about but uh, to me they are uh, so, so so play around so uh tristan and I'm, i call on people i call up, upon people uh so get ready for this uh so tristan what are you thankful for today and why okay. yeah um for the rain because it calms the nerves and cools the planet cool you see for a beautiful and sunny weather in Berlin. Why? Good mood. Okay, Jesse. Um, I had a really cool conversation with Claire from the Flow Research Collective yesterday. That was really fun. Okay, Shahid, are you thankful for anything today? Uh, my ability to think. And why? I'm under so much stress this month, so. I'm able to think straight. This is good. a good thing. Yeah. Good. good. That's good. Mark, what are you grateful for and why? I think today I just had a I had a really good meeting. And uh, I don't know if you guys can relate, but sometimes things just like fall into place. Uh -huh. um, and that's a really good feeling, specifically at the end of the week. So yeah, that's like something for sure that I'm grateful for today. Okay. Uh, well, I'm grateful for the callers because although they don't exist. Uh, it's pretty cool that they're there for me to see. Um, and uh, okay, so now, uh, Jesse, uh, what's the most beautiful thing you've done this week? The most what? Beautiful thing you've done this week? <laughs> Just went out hiking in the mountains. There you go. You see. Dream beautiful, beautiful dreams. Cool. Last night. Nice. The sun. I can't hear you. You're muted. You yeah, cannot mute yourself. Uh, nothing nerdy. This is the, the smile of my fiance when she was working hard and I brought her something sweet to eat. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark? It's a. Mm. Uh, so still thinking, but like I, I think so. I spend an afternoon with my son at Banzi, which was really okay. nice. Nice. Um, yeah. I think what I you do? Personal highlight. What you do? What do you do? I spent uh, a day with my son, or an afternoon with my son at Banzi. 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 Okay. Mm. Shahid, most beautiful thing you've done. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, me and another friend from the course. We finally. Uh, have an idea for our project and oh, 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 oh. very good achievement nice and me i finally let myself upload uh, some photos slash paintings that i've been working on 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 instagram and i've been postponing this thing for like months and today I was crazy. I was like, okay, I'm doing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I got frantically like do, doing these things for uh, for uh, like an hour or so. So I'm pretty happy about this. Okay. Uh, so um, Shaid, would you... Uh, so my idea is that, uh, well, normally the way you do it, you present something, like you show us a little bit of your things. Uh, we tell you what we think, so you can decide whether you want to continue with your career as an artist or not. Uh, after we like, uh, you know, express our very, you know, uh, thoughtful and uh, precise, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, what's the word in English? I'm blinking. Uh, uh, 
our opinions. Uh, and uh, as you talk, of course, uh, uh, since this is a, I would like this to be like a lovely space, we, we interrupt you if we have questions. Yes, okay. Um, so, and it should, so, so I, I sort of stay there. People do a little bit what they want, unless it yeah. gets too messy, I don't intervene. Yeah. And then um, if we have a little bit of time, I would like you, I would like to, to show you an artist that I've been uh, uh, keeping, an, keeping an eye on uh, uh, the past couple of weeks. Uh, uh, so he's a new media artist, uh, like super, super, super cool. Uh, I showed a little bit to Tristan, but uh, I think it's worth uh, that everybody likes him because he's a crazy genius. So I, I love that. So, so Shahid, uh, you need to share a screen, right? As yeah. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, because I'm supposed to remember how to do this, right? Uh, yes. Uh, and I have to, ah, no, I don't have to share a screen. I have to let you share a screen. Yeah. So <laughs> can you do that now? You should, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So, so uh, maybe before that, I will, okay, it's gone anyway. So I will uh, talk a little bit about myself. So my name is Shahid. I come from Lebanon. I studied fine arts as in painting and uh, photography. I did my bachelor in Lebanon, then I worked for a couple of years in Qatar, then I moved to Berlin in 2014 to do my master's in stage design and scenography. And in this uh, study, there are like three different um, direction where you could go. One of them is stage design, which is working in theaters. The second one is uh, scenography, which is designing exhibitions and working in museum. And the third one called uh, Raum Labo. I don't really know how to translate this in English, which is more like spatial laboratory, space laboratory, more or less. And I went more into this direction and my, my let's say my final project at, the, at, at, at this master uh, study was an interactive installation with light and sound that I did. Um, yeah, you could see here, I created uh, around uh, 250 uh, figures from clay that look like people walking. And I set them in a room uh, where they are going towards this um, uh, rainbow uh, artificial color. And it's done in a way that if the person who is visiting this room is coming towards the rainbow, the rainbow is turning off and then you're bringing this whole space into complete darkness. And uh, the, the installation was back then some sort of analogy to the, um, to the uh, big wave of refugees that came to Germany in 2015 and 2016. It was a big topic back then. And since I come from Lebanon and I speak Arabic, so I was also in touch with lots of refugees to help and to support. And this was a very interesting topic that touched me back then, especially this trip that they had between Syria going to, or like Iraq or different countries crossing the Balkan countries all the way to Germany. Could you, could you tell me one thing that you that really stood out uh, to you when you were interacting with these people? Yeah, I mean, uh, you hear many stories, right? You hear many stories and it's like, I mean, it might seem too dramatic, but I heard many stories about like people who are, I don't know, 30, 40 people in a small boat in the sea trying to cross the sea and some uh, came across bad weather and some people fell off and died and so on. So it's like countless stories or how they were treated in, in Serbia or like Hungary or, so you come across many different Hi. stories. Okay. Yeah, and um, actually because of uh, this installation, I got, or like because of this work, I got invited to work for a, for a Stiftung here in Berlin, which later on also, um, after that, I got invited to do a research fellow job in qualitative research at the FU here in Berlin on the topic of labor market integration of refugees and societal participation. Anyway, uh, art, back to art, um, since 
uh, this was like my uh, my start with um, interactive installations. So I was working with mainly with uh, um, in an analog way. So I would collect um, uh, movement sensors, Bewegungsmelder, you say in German, mm -hmm. like buying different types and trying with different. Uh, uh, um, lights and I was focusing more if you could see here in the picture I don't know is the picture showing mm -hmm. so I was working uh, mostly in these installations with neon lights mm -hmm. and the reason I work with neon lights is because as I said I come from Lebanon I was born during the civil war and back then the only light that we could afford was neon light Mm. The neon light, when there's electricity, it makes this buzzing sound at the beginning, like this, mm. and then it goes on. So this was kind of like this is a very interesting sound that is encrypted in our, in my mind or in my my friend's mind, because as soon as we heard the sound, we knew that okay, there's electricity because we were suffering, still Lebanon is suffering, but we were suffering from electricity cutouts. So we had electricity. I don't know two or three times a day only. Oh, so whenever okay. we heard the sound, we were like, like super. So the sound was for us. So okay. this is why I chose to work with. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So this is why I chose to work with this material because also of the texture uh, of the neon lights that I like. And I started doing. I started this installation in 2019 for the Performance Art Festival. Uh, then the installation traveled to different parts until, and we showed it in different places in Germany until 2020, during the pandemic, a curator contacted me because he went to my first installation and offered me and the sound artist, so I'm working with sound artists, I create the lightscape and the sound artist kind of work on the sounds and then we integrate them together. So this curator invited me to uh, to show a piece at the um, uh, historical hall of the Humboldt Carré, which is in the heart of Berlin. Mm -hmm. And um, so usually I like to hang the lights from the ceiling. Okay. But because the ceiling here is around, I don't know, like. 20 meters, we couldn't really reach it. We so we created these uh, uh, structures, oh, yeah. Yeah. which for us or for me personally were more like light sculptures. Okay. Uh, if you come close to them, they turn on and off. Okay. Um, so, so I have a question. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, like, uh, so the first meaning uh, of light for you is a uh, is, uh, is this thing of, about electricity like coming back, right? Yes, but if you could yes. name a second thing that comes to mind when you think about light, what, what comes to mind? I mean, if you want to talk about the, the um, this, this, this part that is okay, the electricity is coming back, but this was not only the electricity coming back, this was happiness. That means that we were able to heat some water to shower. We were able to watch TV. We were able to listen to the radio. We were able. Yeah. So this was like kind of big thing. It was like, like. A, yes, festivity. Exactly. OK, OK. So Jesse, what's the first word that comes to mind when you think about light? <laughs> <laughs> sunrise. Sunrise. What about uh, Tristan? First word that comes to mind when you think about light. I'm, I'm just thinking all the time about the neon lights, which is a very, very nice, like you already said, it's a symbol for something, but it's also a part of this whole synth wave aesthetics. Yeah. Okay. I see. Any word that comes to mind when you think about light? I meet sun. So sun and good mood. Sun. What about Mark? Um, shadows, actually. <laughs> so what? Shadows, shadows. Ah, like, shadows. That's interesting. Like that was my first associ association. So, yeah. Good. Uh, mm. For me, light is knowledge, uh, actually. But um, okay. So Shahid, uh, uh, so you understand how it works, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> go ahead. So yeah, uh, then we, yeah, like in this piece, we we started working. So as I said before, I was working like I col I was uh, collecting uh, motion sensors. But here in this uh, installation, because we were able to get a little bit of funds, 
we were able to spoil ourselves and to call one of uh, one of the technicians that works with a system called Arduino, and he was able to connect some of these lights to the system with the sound. This is the fellow artist that I worked with. Her name is Katarina Bevand, and she is um, a sound artist. Mm -hmm. And this is this structure you see here is like five meters high, so the space. Um, I can uh, show like a little video here. Yeah, please. Just a moment. Okay, please turn on. <laughs> ah, there it is. Okay, I think you will not be able to hear the sound for technical reasons, because maybe you were using the sound here. But to talk a little bit about this, so this uh, curator, so um, as I said, like when, when we created the, or when I created the first uh, um, installation, my idea was I do not want to do any 2D art anymore. Can you share again? Because I went away. Yeah, hello? Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, what I was trying to say that uh, my first idea or my first thought when I went into this kind of art was that I don't want to do 2D art anymore. It doesn't interest me to stand in front of a, of a surface. I want to create space where the visitor is the artwork themselves. It's not oh. what's happening. Okay. And I, I started this experimenting with the light and sounds. I mean, here we cannot hear the sounds very well, but you will find it on my website. Uh, we started working with uh, droning sounds. So um, being a yoga teacher gave me access to in yoga classes. I was recording when the students were saying OM at the end. And, and we worked with it, with the, with the sound artist. We kind of made it a little bit more abstract with some overtone singing and different sounds from different places that we recorded. And we played these sounds in a, in a droney way, as I said, like with, with a reverb into the room. And, um, and this, uh, um, this actually gave the curator that, uh, that was working with us an idea he he called me the temple builder he like for for him this is a temple and it was really interesting because many of my yoga students came there and they was like just sitting there for one hour meditating and like kind of enjoying the sound um i would recommend that you hear the sound yes and um so, so were trees bending on them uh, as a uh, you know the, the story that we i know. wish <laughs> or flowers of lotus like blooming, like, uh, like blooming <laughs> yeah. through the cables right <laughs> exactly so so let me ask you something uh, uh so was this purposeful was was this uh like done on purpose uh to overlap uh some of um like, like uh your your recordings of om so 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 this this uh you would allow maybe like a spiritual uh Mm. Yes, yes. I mean, on top yeah, of yeah, I mean, this is um as as the curator put it in a very good way, like you come into the space and you feel you're entering a temple. You know, like when you're entering a church or a mosque or a synagogue or a, or a Buddhist temple, you feel the, the presence of the space, right? Like the space is kind of saying, okay, I'm here, be aware of yourself. And this is the feeling that he and uh, the visitors more or less gave to us that this is how they felt. And um, so I started kind of tinkering a little bit with the thoughts since last year. And uh, um, as some of you know, I'm showing a piece at the Palais Populaire on the beginning of July, July 1st. And it's gonna go more in this direction. So oh, yeah, with you experimenting with light too. I'm experimenting with light. This time we're working with a sound artist, uh, a different sound artist who who built a 16-channel uh, sound system. That is, uh, when you're walking in the space, it's interacting and creating piano notes. 
practically. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. And, uh, and just to say one thing, these 250 clay uh, figures that I, or like uh, small statues that I made for my installation, I took them one day to Potsdamer Platz here in Berlin, and I left them there for three days, and I was coming every day to take pictures of, and it was interesting, some people took some of them, some people just rearranged them, so I put them all in one line facing the sun, and I came the, the same day uh, and this is how, how they looked like because people were playing with them. Okay. And after three days, there was the Berlin Marathon and I think they just like took everything away. And for me, this was fine. Okay. Because to so, me, so, this is not so, my art. This art belongs to the... So, so, so the idea is that your work uh, so far, at least like uh, really animates, uh, comes to life when uh, people uh, enter yeah. in, uh, in a yeah. play. Or, yeah, I mean, some lights turn on, some lights uh, turn off. It's the idea that the, the, the visitor becomes aware of the space, becomes aware of his or her ability to change the space. Okay, nice. Yeah. Questions, anyone? No? Okay. Would you want to show us something else? Uh, I don't really. Let me try. To be honest, I'm in the middle of re designing my my Facebook page. Uh, my my. Uh, oh, okay. I can my, uh, show something otherwise. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, so hold on. Uh, okay, what's up then? Let me find this guy. There we go. All right. So this guy I'm gonna present you here. Uh, he's uh, he's out of his mind, uh, and you guys should. Uh, but like in a again, like in a very nice way. Like I say it in a, in a very uh, raptured and uh, mesmerized kind of way. Actually, why don't I show you something else? So, um, okay, uh, hold on. Um, loading. Okay. Cool. Can you see this guy here? Because I cannot see what I'm, yeah? Okay. Yes. So uh, we could, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a four minutes uh, video, uh, which, is, um, which is basically um, uh, like a, a short introduction of one hour presentation that he did uh, on his work. Uh, let me get rid of the shit here. Okay. Yeah, all good. Can I go? Hmm? Yeah. Hi, my name's Bemo Acton. I'm a computational artist. And my biggest inspiration is studying the nature of nature. This spans from the nuclear fusion in the heart of the sun to the photosynthesizing organisms that fuel all of life on the surface of the earth to the incredibly complex hyperobject that we call human civilization and culture. I use computational approaches as a lens and language to abstract the behavior of these natural and anthropogenic processes to create data dramatizations. My research centers around expressive human-machine interaction and interventions that encourage meaningful human control, the term that I appropriate from the autonomous weapons literature. Framing technology as not external to us, but as extensions of our body, as extensions of our mind, I study its impact on us as individuals, on how we behave and how we express ourselves. And as cogs in a much larger machine, its broader impact on the complex networks that we form, on culture, and ultimately on our values, our law, 
rituals, traditions, and rituals. As part of studying the nature of nature, I'm also very interested in studying the nature of the mind and how we make sense of the world. I am 70 trillion separate cells, more than half of which are not even human, and yet they all work together, such that their interactions gives rise to the sensation that I have this one single unified body, with a single unified sense of I, coordinated by the brain, an incredibly complex non-linear dynamical system, in a constant state of oscillation, while its internal balance is continually perturbed, it's constantly seeking equilibrium, making predictions, and resulting in what we call perceiving, thinking, and feeling. The image that we see in our conscious mind is not a mirror image reflection of the outside world, but it is a reconstruction, a hallucination, based on our expectations and prior beliefs. data dramatizations of natural and anthropogenic processes, and I explore state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms as a means to reflect on ourselves and how we make sense of the world. When an artificial neural network looks out onto the world and tries to make sense of what it's seeing, it can only see through the filter of what it already knows, just like us, because we too see things not as they are, but as we are. Come back for a minute. Thoughts, impressions, feelings. I like the term data dramatization. I think this is really a very good description of kind of what we are also trying to achieve here and also what we're talking about the, in these sessions. I love it. Data dramatization. Data dramatization. Well, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never heard this expression actually. And me I, neither, I, me neither. And that's why I liked it so much. Yeah, uh, more. Just random, it's not about being uh, right or wrong. Uh, before I call you, Jesse, for instance. <laughs> I knew you, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> no, I like how he, he pointed out that neural networks see things not as they are, but as how they, what they know. And like humans are the same way. Like. We don't see things as they are, but as we know things, it's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tristan. Um, data dramatization. I'm, I'm thinking a lot about this, these external brains that they have. Um, recently, um, you know, I bought this new computer and I'm migrating data from A to B. And I have a couple of hard drives that are really, 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 really pushing. <laughs> To that, or well, I am pushing them to to store all my data that I have, and I, I've gathered quite a lot of data. I mean, I'm just a few years old, and I started doing computers in the '90s. But since then, there's so much data, but it is not. There's not really a way where you can visualize, or I don't have a way to visualize all the data that I have gathered over the time. There's so much in it. I mean, all the programming things that I've done over time all the photos that I took and archived, all the paintings that I drew, everything, it's its there on a hard drive. And it will take days to just get an overview of what's actually there. And 
well, I'm not an exception. Well, I might be an exception that um, I keep track of quite a lot of data that I have, but how much data do you generate on an everyday basis is, is quite a lot. How much data does your current computer hold? How much data did all the computers held that you had during the lifetime? How big of a trace did you leave on the internet with everything that you've uploaded on? Yeah. So much. And uh, if I may add, how much data are we um, bombarded with every second? It's been yeah. calculated that it's probably about 10 billion bits a second. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Hello, and uh, and we are aware of uh, like uh, between 40, 60, 70 bits per second. So that's the span of our attention. Everything else, it's either processed on uh, like automatically, so to speak, or, or tossed out. And uh, and it was interesting because I was in um, I was in a recent conversation uh, about AI and robotics with a bunch of so-called futurists and. Uh, uh, don't get me. Uh, anyways, so we were talking about these things, and and uh, uh, um, there was this uh, discussion at some point that said, "Oh, you know, uh, we are uh, conscious. Robots are not. Robots have uh, this old, uh, you know, structure that is completely autom automated, and we haven't." And I said, "Well, we have a lot of stuff that it's actually automated. We don't control anything." like consciously at least that that happens in our body i'm talking about the million reactions that are happening in our body our microbiome our heart uh, our brain the way it produces electricity we don't have any we cannot do anything really about it this is a lot of stuff that's completely automated um so i was uh, pushing a little bit this different like if the difference between uh, robots and humans is uh, you know automated processes I'm not so sure that uh, about the difference anymore. If uh, like uh, think it this way, but uh, but I digress as usual. Um, Mark, uh, would you wanna respond to any of the things that you heard, uh, or or not? <laughs> no, for sure. Um, I liked. I mean, in the in the reel that you just like introduced, I liked it a lot. Um, on, on what you just said, like I didn't, maybe I didn't fully get it. So basically saying that we as humans become more machine-like because there's many automated processes within us. Or ah, well, we thought that we become, we, we kind of already are. are. Yeah. Because, because a lot of stuff that happens in our body, we have no awareness of it, luckily, actually, because imagine controlling your heart while you're speaking all, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the release of neurotransmitters in your brain or, or, or switching between, uh, uh, you know, like alpha, beta, gamma, delta brain waves uh, as like tuning this kind of stuff as we're talking like, oh, I might go to delta right now. Like, uh, it's pretty crazy to do, uh, like, uh, right? Not yeah. to mention what happens when we digest. Uh, oh, you know, uh, yeah. And uh, I think uh, this thing continue quite a bit like these are all automated processes if we want wouldn't you agree uh, or am i wrong? Oh, first no oh, oh. okay um shahid uh i had this uh, conversation uh, recently with another friend who's an artist and is like really uh, very active in the art scene and um, he had a very nice approach and idea uh, especially to what uh, Tristan was talking about, um, about data generation to generate data. And um, I never, I mean, I've seen lots of his artworks before, and but I never really knew that he said he does not produce any images. He works with what is there because we are as humans producing lots of images on a daily basis. Yeah. So he actually serves the web, YouTube, everywhere to find images that he could work with and create his art with. Wow. I is... found this a very, very interesting approach, actually. Uh, so I would like to um, try a little experiment. Uh, not that uh, I'm going to ask you whether you agree or not, because we will just do it. So Tristan, I would like to have a sneak peek in your brain. Would you let me do that? Yep, good. So I'm gonna play this thing, you'll watch it, and I would like to you to tell me 
anything that comes to mind as you're watching this thing for a little bit and then okay. everybody else uh, yeah. Leni Riefenstahl be these uh, feelings be these uh, the description of the image uh, be these uh, anything mm, latent space exploration Gauguin more latent space exploration roses Gauguin again Computational geometry, cosine distance, pol polar coordinates, pixel meter, and augmented reality, 16 bit color space, lasers. Nice. Okay, Jesse, do the same. But uh, your way, of course. What do you see, or what happens in your head as you're looking at this? I'm seeing drums and lights that are corresponding with it. Yes. I don't know why That's they're all wearing feel. hoods, but it's cool. <laughs> and okay. How do you feel? Scared. This dude's cool. trippy. Cool. <laughs> What's wrong with what's going on with this image? It feels like you're zooming inside the person, and then these are I don't know. Just gymnastic sound. Kind of just mesmerizing watching it. Yeah, yeah okay. You see. I miss the sound. I want the sound. And <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear a voice. Yeah, no, but also um. Yeah, I love the the different interpretation of data uh, of data dramatization. Uh -huh. Again, in my head, data dramatization in terms of how you can translate data into all these creative views. That's what I'm thinking the whole time. Great, uh, Mark. Hello. Comment on anything, like either what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're. Yeah, thinking. of course. Uh, projection mapping, I think. Like, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh -oh. Waves. Wait. <laughs> I have, like, hey, just, yes. I just have waves in my mind right now. <laughs> yes, yes, that's fine. No worries, no worries. Okay. Shahid, go ahead. Uh, dropping acid. <laughs> yeah, good. More, more. Yeah, <laughs> finally. Perfect yeah, for this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm also very impressed with the term that EC used, uh, data dramatization. And uh, I'm gonna look into this, especially that we did this uh, um, uh, gun uh, we talked a little bit about with Tristan, and it's uh, something I want to look into after uh, my upcoming exhibition is finished and I want to go more into uh, creating a virtual temples this time. Virtual temple. Okay. Yeah. Can I have a little bit of feedback on this exercise? How hard or easy it is to voice whatever comes through your head? Anyone? I have a challenge as the bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because you, you have one, one, this one impression and it's hard to put one or two words on it yeah i could go wild and just talk at length about just one impression there of course okay so it was hard to nail uh, what you wanted to say because things uh, right because you had to uh... compact it so what to, uh, it's hard to compact it and just yeah, of course. Yeah. okay um exactly more? same for me like you have so many like there are like so many thoughts and like you know one thought leads to another and then to another and then like to try to articulate that to <laughs> others so that's why it's also interesting because the whole time you're thinking about, okay, that's my perception. How uh -huh. can I describe my perception to others so that we can have a shared, you know, interpretation of what we're seeing? Because right. indeed, it's like not what we, what it is, but what we know and what we see, as okay. they said in the video. Nice. Mark? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I, I, would, I would fully agree to that. However, like to me, that was just like this one association uh, that I would name, but then it would be hard to like, uh, I don't know, put, put the rest in words. Like, like for me, always this like one association would come up. Uh -huh. um, yeah, exactly. What was the, the main, uh, um, what was the main uh, thing that you were uh, struck with? I think that, well, like in the case of projection mapping, projection mapping, although like there were like, I think a lot of things going around in my head, but what's, I don't know, like somehow get stuck to this. Maybe because of wanting too hard or thinking, too hard, I don't know. It's hard not to like, uh, just uh, <laughs> right? Mm. Is it is it hard or, uh, or, or is it easy? Like, or how do you, like, to just jam on your thoughts, literally? Like, okay, you're watching something. Tell me what you're seeing. Is it easy to do that or, or, or not? What do you think? I guess it depends. It depends, right? Okay. okay. Shahid? Yeah, I think uh, it depends on the context. I mean, it could be that you're sitting in front of your uh, uh, psychotherapist and <laughs> she is or he is showing you pictures and then you have to interpret. So it, it has this kind of similar approach and it's not easy to kind of say uh, the first idea that comes to your mind because as humans, we are programmed to always look for a meaning behind uh, things. So... Wow. We, we, you are creating gifts. You want to create a, yeah. a meaning of the waves. You want to make sense, yeah. And uh, yeah. I think it's hard sometimes just to rest on the the emergence of uh, of thoughts uh, without uh, falling into the temptation of uh, chaining them together uh, to make a story or to deliver a, a narrative. Because this is something that we like do by default, but but uh, but it's actually mm, very hard to like sit there and say, okay, I'm gonna stay disconnected and just like voice things that they, as they pop into my head without trying to build a, a coherent story. Um, so at least uh, that's how I. Uh, see. Uh, uh, I could just uh, remembered one thing. So I did. Uh... Uh, an ayahuasca um, uh, ceremony some years ago. And ah, see, uh, ayahuasca. I like this guy. Look at you. <laughs> in <laughs> Colombia day, or in Mexico? The next day, this woman that she was leading the, the ceremony that night, she was like sitting and talking because it was really intense. I mean, you really emotionally get, wow, it was incredible. And then the woman the next day, she said, please, when you go home, do not make any important decisions. Do not quit your job. Do not leave your partner. <laughs> do not <laughs> decide anything. Just take it easy for one week yeah. and then try to think because of yeah. too many thoughts and ideas yeah. that come to your mind and you're like. Yeah, yeah. I, I You know, uh, I'm sorry. I heard the same, but not after ayahuasca, but just after some yoga teacher's training. For real? Also, yeah, yeah. I mean, also yeah. because uh, a lot of people after their teacher training say, like, okay, I'm going to be the next guru. I'm quitting my job. I'm becoming right. dedicated to yoga. Yeah, I mean, we as human beings have this tendency to be little, trust too much our intuitions sometimes, perhaps. Uh... I wouldn't call it trusting intuition. I would call it more like we we want to be special we long to be special hmm. so we think do we aren't we things mom always told me i was <laughs> are you questioning uh, my mom i call her <laughs> <laughs> yeah jesse i have a, I, I left you for the last because uh, you know uh you're like uh, the best part <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I go back to your original question. Is it hard? Yeah, it's yeah. incredibly hard. Yeah, it like is. you're struggling to come up with a story or a narrative. Yeah, but do you, do you hear scenes. a voice in your head going like, what are you saying? What are you talking about? Like kind of like, do you? Yeah, there's an internal voice and then it, yeah, my, like my com computational speed is not quick enough to get it out of my mouth Hi. by the time there's a next scene. Hi. 
You're right. So it's hard to get in the zone when we do exercises like this, right? Because we hear uh, like another voice going like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you saying? Like this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, well, actually, Jesse, so in what situations you don't hear a voice like this? Because I hear it very often, actually. Like, not your voice, like mine. Like, da, 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 but there are some yeah. situations in which I hear it uh, less or not at all. Some situations are like, like, like when I do this, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe it's um, uh, contradictory, but I experience silence when I do this. It, yeah, for me, it's in, in the mountains, right? If you go back to like the flow research, the skills balance or risk versus skills like so when you're on a mountain and there's a, a large amount of risk and you're matching your skill set with that risk like that voice in my head stops and you can you can only focus on the immediate and what you're doing and uh, isn't it sweet yeah. when like <laughs> shuts up I'm like, <sighs> yeah. See, do you have uh do you have a nagging voice in your head too and uh, do you experience silence uh when you do something uh of i don't know like, uh, do you, do you not? Is it clear what I said? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> do you ever find yourself having a nagging voice in your head when you're doing something? Sure. I mean, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, very, very often. But this uh, voice is not there when I'm in the flow. Like, if something is very interesting to me, for example, like doing a model, which I really, really, really enjoy. And then it's like, you know, you do one thing, then you get another idea, then this idea works, and then you get another idea, and then you get three other ideas, and then and then it's like the flow. Yeah, exactly. Because pattern recognition is amplified when we're in flow, and uh, and then like uh, we start seeing stuff. Tristan, do you have a nagging voice in your head when you're uh, doing well, anything? I, I, I do have a head that is very, very active. I have my ways to calm it down. There is a nagging old bastard inside my head, but I managed to calm it down significantly over the last 20 years, I think. Okay. Okay. It's not nagging, but but sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit harder. Give you an example. Um so sometimes when I when I read, I, I have to have a notebook right next to me. Because although I'm reading about a certain topic. There's some part of my head that's that spits out ideas about something else. Then I just write them down, right? Because for later, for later, for later. Oh, yeah. I, I could reading about reinforcement learning, I could fill to-do lists for completely different <laughs> <topics. It's, laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how this mental illness is called. It's like called fine. widespread, uh, uh, Tristan. I believe everyone has. Uh, we, we suffer from the same. I also need to write notes, and every that's why sometimes I need either hard copies or iPad where I can write. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mark, do you have a, a nagging of Woody Allen, a little Woody Allen? <laughs> a little Woody Allen. Yeah, I think we all have at some point. But uh, uh, like touching on what Tristan just said, like I, I, I like that idea that, like I never thought about writing down while you would read i mean not if you're like just writing a paper or anything right but like that's that's interesting because i think i can in inspect the same thing uh that sometimes when you're reading and you're getting into this like uh somehow like some part of the mind is also freed and and like some crazy ideas come up i don't know so i think i'll i'll keep that for sure <laughs> cool Shahid, uh, are you perfectly silent uh, since you're uh you know quite a put together uh human being uh, like a uh, or, or uh, uh, no. do you experience uh you know those kind of uh feelings that uh, and experiences that the lower levels of existence uh, go through uh, yeah i mean inside each one of us there's this um uh, antichrist right who's like <laughs> whoa <laughs> like trying to destroy everything and make you doubt everything you're doing in life and and we're like, what's the point of this? And what's the point of doing this or doing that? And uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, meditation really helped a lot. Um, uh, I think to me also practicing yoga helped a lot. Um, 
especially the more like I'm advancing in this uh, in this field, yoga and meditation, the more I'm learning to control it, more yeah. or less, right? Or maybe I don't know if it's controlling or more like learning to ignore it, but but it's getting less and less loud. Um, I tell you something. It was I think ages ago, and I might get this quote wrong. So someone said that inside everyone there are demons but you have to exercise them not exorcise them exercise them yeah yeah which means that you have to train them to do your bidding <laughs> while we're speaking of, about demons so the thing is with the with the monkey mind that is is fulfilling quite a lot of purposes but it can go wrong violently uh -huh. and that's why you should do mental exercises and you should do meditation quite other things to kind of tame it to calm it down to put it on the right track uh -huh. there was a song at some point that i was listening to that said something like uh if you make peace it says i'm, I'm paraphrasing like it says if you make peace with your demons you'll discover them to be angels that are right. freeing you because these demons are actually carrying messages that you have to yeah. deal with uh, and if you learn to listen to these demons uh, and uh, and make peace with them then they have a, like a liberative uh, uh, power um, and uh, and um, so one thing and then another thing that i wanted to to like uh, comment on uh, shahid was uh, this like meditation like to me meditation it's actually teaching me to uh, be okay, for example, when I have moments where I can't really focus. For example, in the past couple of weeks, I can't uh, stay in meditation for longer than like 20, 25, 25 minutes. Then it becomes too much. And not because normally I do 33 minutes, sometimes I do one hour uh, the weekends. But lately I, I can't bring myself to do it because it gets too much and i'm okay with that i don't uh, mortify myself and go like oh you idiot uh, what's wrong with you like you went back uh, you could do it now you can like even today i was like okay i and i think meditation taught me that to say yeah. all right sometimes you go sometimes like uh, my level of focus so, or, or 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 my level so my level of um openness and awareness dips and 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 it's okay because uh life uh, goes like this uh, actually i think we all have these uh, moments and like this is why i actually in, in in these moments i go to buddhist temple to practice then to with a group of people to kind of force myself to overcome this monkey mind because then i'm not feel like I'm obliged yeah. to sit yeah. for 60 minutes and not do anything Okay, okay. That happens to the best of us. I, I remember that four <laughs> years ago, I, I attended a yoga seminar by some half a yoga guru from Switzerland. And he told us that he had a time of crisis in his life where he realized that he has a time of crisis because, because he couldn't do the headstand for 60 minutes straight. So he only managed 45. Oh, so you realize that there's something wrong. <laughs> But I don't know how he how he could uh, get out of it. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, but that's, okay. That's, but that's the thing. If you do something, I mean, this is the, the principle behind Ashtanga Yoga, because it's always all the same, the same procedure, the same sequence, but you perform di differently every day. And then you realize that something is off because you cannot do these things suddenly that you managed yesterday. Yeah. Quite interesting. But this is true, like with every every we have every physical activity sometimes i work on my rings and i can do stuff and then the next day i go back i'm like what the hell is wrong like uh, anyways more art hold on uh you up to it right yes uh so how about this because uh it freaked out uh, jesse and i want to freak him out a little more <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm a sadist, am I? <laughs> the hills of eyes. Yeah, fractals. Um, yeah, kind of. 
Yeah, because you keep um, missing information that yeah. the artist gets from the last convolutional layers of the deep neural network. Bang. <laughs> How? Now, now we switch layers. Yeah. And now I it's actually, how it? Sphinx? What the hell is going on? And then some sort of animal, bird, I suppose. Then back, boom. Nice. Let me send you something. Um, I, I sent you something here in the in the in the chat. Can you open this? Yeah, of course. Hold on, Jesse. Did we freak you out? A little, did I freak you out a little more, or are you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll uh, I'll open this. Uh... Yeah, it's it's safe. Can you see work. it? Okay. See? Can you see it? There it comes. There it comes. Yeah. Um, it's Ashley, it's an artist. He calls himself, what is this? An arcane hyper collage artist. Oh, wow. So he uses different technologies to enhance art. I actually have, uh, now it's too dark. I have one of his paintings here. I asked him for a print and he, he went and, and printed one of his art pieces and sent him a couple of euros. And I'm quite happy about that. Oh, and wow. he uses the same thing that we saw before with the eyes, but a little bit more Okay, it's a little bit more sensitive in order to augment his pieces of artwork to add more detail to it. Yeah, I could watch this for days. Yeah, he's even, quite a magician. Uh, even sober, actually. I could watch this for days. Yeah. yeah. Man. Uh, any man mandala here? Yes, a lot of those. Oh, wow. Let's see if there is a voice here. No. <laughs> Tristan, can like, can you explain like how he made it, or anybody? Um, there's there's only a part of it that I can tell you when. Well, the hills have eyes. When you saw the the guy getting more eyes over his face. Oh, do you want me to put that back? Yeah, please be so kind. I'm resistant to that. <laughs> I just watched an episode of Stranger Things, so. <laughs> um, so what what's if you have a picture and you scale it down, you lose some information, but well, it's, it's not a big, if you scale it up, there's always some missing information. So usually it gets blurry. And this is uh, an approach called dream, deep dream, where you would use the last layers of a convolutional neural network to come up with the missing information. And usually the, the last layers of a convolutional neural network are with, like they, they correspond to objects like pieces, um, eyes and mouths and so on and so forth. And so it just takes those patterns that it knows to to augment or to insert the missing information. That's why it gets so creepy. So, if you go up, if you don't use the last layers, but you go up in, in the layers, you would see those patterns. I think those patterns that come here, those stripes mm -hmm. that are like, you could use them to form eyes, but it's a stage before that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I ask you something? Uh, this is interesting, but would you call it beautiful? That's in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah, but uh, I not not exactly. If you ask me if I would hang it on my wall, I would say no. Okay. Not okay. My style. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I think. Maybe I would also um, agree with Tristan. I mean, um, on a technical level, this is nice work, well done. But I don't know. I mean, like Tristan said, it's in the eye of the beholder. I don't really also find it interesting on a personal level. OK. Yeah. Just see, would you hang it uh, on top of a mountain? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. but. I mean, it would fit in with like the artwork of Tool and the music. I think like Easy says, like you've got to have music with it to make it interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't doesn't have it. Uh, I'm afraid. Easy, are you with us? I'm with you. Ah, Just okay. thinking about um, in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, if they're 
many beholders that would hang it on their wall, then I guess it's uh, for the majority, it's nice. For me, maybe also not my most favorite thing, no. Um, can I suggest something? Uh, so something is beautiful and I like something. These are two different statements, which oftentimes we mixed with each other. I like the way we, it's the way that if we hear language here, I like it's, this is uh, something that says that there is a, like a personal thing happening right there. But, but something is beautiful is really, language is doing something else here. Langu language is suggesting here that there is a, a, a process of recognition which means that uh, something that we're watching right there meets something else, some criteria that we have. We normally we say, you know, it's the beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, or I hear a lot beauty subjective, but actually it's a little uh, more, uh, it's a little different than this. And I don't wanna, I think I'll leave you with this. Then maybe we talk another time. I wanna show you something else. Uh, may I? Ready? Yes. Here we go. This is uh, something uh, which I find uh, quite uh, mesmerizing, actually. And it's uh, something you did for McLaren. Maybe there is music, maybe not. Let me see about the uh, quality. We want the best quality. Go. Oh, there is music. There you go. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. So you see, how do you feel? How do you like it if you do? I got my music. <laughs> you got no. your music, right? Yeah. What no, about I the record? Do we like it? Do we not? Do we find the... Uh... So this is advertisement, right? Would we call it art though? I mean, it is an artistic approach, but like you said, it's to, to me, it's pure advertisement. I, I don't see any value in it. You don't? Nice, nice work, nice, nicely done. Very, very beautifully um, done, but. So advertisement cannot ever be art? Am I hearing it's, this? It's art with a subliminal message. Like they're trying to coerce you into doing something <laughs> buy a million a million dollars car of course <laughs> you know, like i wish <laughs> but yeah anyone else wants to comment on this no uh well this is something that i would love to hang on my wall if it was hangable oh yeah except, yeah. except the for the car i don't care about the car it's the visuals i mean look at all those magenta and synthwave I mean, those are the colors that, that resonate with me a lot. Yeah. yeah and I love do they, are, who are is they? Is there such thing as a digital picture frame, Tristan? Like live art? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. it's called <laughs> screen. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you could do that. But. What I like is the visualization of the, like, that's like normally when they test, test cars, right? They put them also in a wind tube. And that's actually, yeah. for me, that's the visualization of the, exactly. like the, the aerodynamics. So that's what I like. And like yeah. they visualized um, aerodynamics and that's uh, what I like about it. So yeah. data dramatization of aerodynamics. Yeah, very dramatic and very, I don't know, I'm sorry, but like 
it's such a hot cut, like it's all these curves. It's like, wow, I kind of want to make love to this car. It's so beautiful. But anyways, uh, I digress again. Uh, let's uh, watch something else. Mm, maybe these flowers. Deep meditation, morphosis. Dresden, did we watch this when we were together? Am I wrong? Um, we saw this a couple of times already. With these? Oh, I mean, not, not this clip, but it has been part of the previous clip. And I think maybe we saw the previous clip already. Okay. Um, oh, the, the first one. But I mean, this is a nice one because this is latent space exploration again. Which one? Uh, the one that, uh, the previous one that you didn't want to, to look at right now. Uh, oh, the, the flowers? No, I thought you didn't want to. So that's why, okay. No, no, I didn't say Can I Can I put it on? Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, this is seven minutes, not for seven minutes though, for a little yeah, bit. No, seven minutes. Uh, maybe it's increased. Uh, the I think this one, I, I don't know exactly about the technology behind that. But the way I would do this, I would train style gun on pictures and then, then do latent space exploration. Style gun. I see peace and the ripples of joy. The implementation is open source. The only thing that you have to do is gather 10,000 training images, then you go. Let's try again. Listen. Freestyle for 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> Where would I get the GPU power? That's what I'm concerned <laughs> about. And like, what kind of data set did this guy curate? So I assume this is something like Style Gun, definitely. And the, it, 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 the, the, the magic is well, again, the data you put in is directly controlling what comes out, what you train it on. Any emotion? Oh, I, I don't have emotions today. <laughs> okay. Jesse, save the day. Uh, I mean, I'm just seeing like a, a, um, like a bunch of landscapes coming together to form new images and the images that, you know, wouldn't be, wouldn't exist in nature. No. Um, now how how are you feeling what, uh... it's very calming it's, it's calming. like maybe a combination of the nature landscapes and the music i think hey you feel more calm hey uh mark uh, give me emotions i feel uh, what yeah specifically like with the space stuff very calm um oh. Yeah, even transitions are, uh, are calming. There is a lot of stuff happening, right? But uh, the overall effect is uh, not calm. Unless you want to follow exactly what's happening on each photo, which is then it's not calming. I feel like I want to keep control of everything that's happening. Anyway. It's nice. Gita, what's in your mind? I want to be able to do it. I'll be able to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. You do it differently? 
if I would do it differently? Yeah. Let's see. I mean, if I get new ideas, probably I would add them. Sure. Whatever the inspiration tells me. Yeah. Would you hang these on your wall? Some of them, not all of them. Not all of them. Tristan, would you hang these on your wall? Getting there, getting there. But I would train it on different pictures. <laughs> uh, well, not suggesting, but I, I, unfortunately, I forgot his name. I had a cooperation with an artist who trained Stalgan too on the, the arts of H.R. Giger, so the alien creator, and quite good results, quite good results. It's even a cover. Um, um, I did a cooperation with NVIDIA where I had one of the AIs talking over the music that I've composed with AI. We used this as a, as a graphic so that. So some Giger's cover art, it was quite nice. Ah, I need a GPU. Now, now I have a feeling it's longing for GPU power. Longing, there you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that could be an open-eye meditation. Shahid, no? Did you? Yeah, oh. um, uh, the artwork here is actually not each of these frames. It's these uh, 18 frames, these 18 uh, video channels, actually. So the art here is not designed to look at it, it's to get a feeling of the, the the motion created by the pictures and the colors in different parts of your eyes. So you're not really focused on one on one. Actually, it's just what you're getting as a feeling from from these eighteen different uh, changing pictures, animated pictures. Are you talking about what it is? Or are you talking about no? I'm saying that what it, what it feels it, for you. Yes, um, what I'm saying is that. I, of course, it's not uh, um, a hangable on the wall it, because it's uh, more or of an institutional art. And at the same time, it's, it's it is really interesting. I I like it. Um, to me, I like art that is somehow making me more interactive with it, more triggering feelings and uh, visuals. So. I do like it. I wonder if uh, the notes that we're hearing were generating, uh, were being generated as the, the paintings were, you know, taking place, or uh, was just uh, done on its own and then, uh, you know, overlapped with the video. Tristan, what would you think? I mean, there is no way I think to know this, right? I I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see something else. Um, anything that uh, piques your uh, curiosity, you tell me? Because I, oh, oh, okay. Fire. Yeah, I was quite, I, I'm mesmerized by fire. Uh, so, I grew up in uh, fam like family's restaurants and we had pizzerias all the time. And one of my favorite uh, things to do when I was a child, we had um, both in this pizzeria where I, like, where I grew up, I wanna say, because I spent so much time in that place, but uh, there, there was a fireplace uh, that I would uh, stare for hours. And then if, when I was a little older, uh, there was the oven uh that i would uh, gaze for 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 hours basically i think uh you know burning uh wood uh, is such a mesmerizing uh, thing to do for me like watching it um oh, it's the same music oh but it's different
He's a person? me back to school. <laughs> what language is this? Anyone? Yeah, this was a little abrupt. I'm sorry, but uh, I wanted to like uh, before Jesse goes. Do you? Mm, so, what kind of artist is this? What kind of artist? Like, what? The, what do we make of this guy? But what is? What is he doing? Uh, I think it's just like many people who are now into this, like uh, Rafika Anadol, for they're doing this AI art. Okay, okay. Uh, Very simple. All right. Uh, something more? Anyone? What are the what are what are kind of uh, thoughts that uh, were evoked as we were watching all these things? And when you ask what kind of person is that, um, you mean what kind of artist? I mean, I mean, not yeah, the person I had kind no of idea. Artist, what, what came to mind is the term technomancer. But I could not, I, I really could not coin it what it actually means. And I looked it up and it says on the internet, a technomancer is someone who's skilled in technomancy. <laughs> technomancy. Like so it's a, a little bit of a black like dark wizard. Uh... No, it's, it's technomancy. It's uh, oh, magical abilities that affect technology. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Or gained through technology. So yeah, it's a technomage. It's yeah. magic technology oh. and uh anything uh any other thought that uh, comes to mind about this guy i find him uh, very meditative actually uh so there is a uh, some sort of uh at least the things we watched so far there was always some sort of exploration that he's trying to do and uh, i can almost see him digging into his own thoughts and uh, like offering some sort of sneak peek to us of what's happening. No? Yes? Beautiful? Remarkable? Not really? I would say interesting. Interesting. First word that comes to my mind. Okay. But then again, it depends. Like like everyone else here said, some of them like this, some of them like that. So I think defining it as beautiful or not beautiful is a matter of personal interpretation. Okay, okay. Um, uh, do we have any? Um, is there something where each one of us, uh, like a, any kind of emotion or thought that you noticed uh, uh, throughout uh, the session that uh, comes to mind right now? Uh, like some sort of shift, for instance? No? No, Antonio, I've, I've got a bail, but I have a question for Shahed before we, before we leave. The, uh -huh. the art installation you showed us was titled Rumination but kind of a play on words. So room, like a physical space. Room. And then rumination to me is like 
you know, kind of like that little yeah, man, yeah. That, that little voice in your head. So yes. like my question yeah. is, how did you come to that? And like, it's a really cool play on words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it took us a while. Uh, the idea is that, um, as I said, like I was always going into this idea of like temple or doing something that's making you more in this meditative, thoughtful uh, uh, state of mind. And um, and I was like uh, like any person just going into the 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 um, the uh, theaters right and like kind of looking for words and I stumbled upon the word uh, uh, rumination and then I thought okay like we are creating a room where you could ruminate right so we we did play with this word actually the. I didn't mention this, but that's very smart remark. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and then I also think about Rumi, the poet, but which uh, uh, yeah. nothing to do with any of this. But um, why not? <laughs> I was saying it was illumination. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It has the same. Uh, uh, dissonant. Um, so uh, would we want to um, adjourn the session because uh, I have uh, some family business that I need to take care of. Uh, so perhaps, uh, so um, yeah, so quickly. So this is uh, this supposed to be like the last uh, of eight uh, sessions that we were going to do. So we have uh, a choice. We could go on for another few meetings if you guys want, uh, maybe like three or four, or we could, uh, you know, take a, a break and, uh, um, you know, come back, uh, um, can come back with some other ideas uh, and maybe we could proceed. Uh, do you guys have any preference with any of this? I'd like to continue, but maybe on Thursdays, because Friday is a bit of a tricky day for me at least. Thursdays. Do you guys want to continue too, uh, Jesse? Because the organizations, we can we can uh, figure something out. But uh, would you want to continue? Yeah, I would. A couple yeah, I'd, of, I'd love to continue. We can chat on LinkedIn or wherever, WhatsApp, and figure okay. out a good time. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I'm late for a call, so I got to say go, goodbye go, go. to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Uh, take care, buddy. Uh, Tristan, uh, any thoughts? Well, you know me. This is something that you should not stop. Okay. I mean, it's an important thing. I mean, you have so many smart people here talking about so many great things in art and, and technology. Okay. okay. Yes. Continue. Yes. I, uh, so my idea is to continue for another four weeks. Uh, and then I, and then I want to take a moment to watch it and then uh, figure out, because I was also thinking to write a, a syllabus and uh, maybe try to sell this class to a uh, university uh to be honest because i don't think that these bitches are doing anything like this in a cornell for example i wrote to some of my professors over there they haven't replied how dare they but uh, but yeah i was thinking to maybe like come up with the with the, with the syllabus and um, and then see so and uh, you guys uh, of course uh, are welcome to join uh, anytime uh, we uh, will see it's either going to be again friday at the same time if we can find an agreement or uh, with my shift to Thursday. Tristan, would you be okay with Thursday Thursday if we were uh, to do that? Could, could it be uh, uh, a fiance possibility? Fiancé would like that. Huh? I think fiancé would like that. Would like that? Yes, yeah, so we can have Friday um, evening uh, date night. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I... Uh, it's actually, I don't mind, I'm agnostic. Uh, so we could also move it to Thursday uh, then. All right, so you guys, uh, Shahid and Mark, uh, you wanna join us next time uh, or, or not? I, if I, would love to, I would love to know, it was very, very good and very interesting. Okay. If okay. I may vote, I would definitely say, please go on because that was not my eighth, but my first session. Uh, and I talked a lot about it with Tomek, right? And uh, yeah, so it uh, would be would be nice. Yeah. All yeah. right. I'll uh, sure. I'll do I'll do a little bit more and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm I'm glad you guys want to do that because uh, I I didn't know. 
So, so I'll see you next week and I'll send a, a new invitation this time for four weeks uh, with the, the link. Uh, and uh, so Mark, I'm going to include you then. Um, yes. So if you could please send me your email. Yeah. And I'll sure. shahid you too. If I can send you the, the yeah. link and then uh, it's up to you yeah. like if you have time and, uh, yeah. and stuff, okay? Yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, we uh, did also other uh, um, episode. I was gonna say, can we say episode? I guess so. Like classes or meetings, yeah, and and I and I recorded them, and they're they're on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you ever wanna um, just uh, browse through to like uh, get a sense of uh, what yeah, else. Sure. Because sure. last week uh, Tristan was presenting. Tristan being uh, the I guy I see beneath. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, wonderful. No, definitely send that to me. Uh, okay, like, okay, cool, yeah. great. So I'll see you next week, and I'm sorry for cutting okay. it short, but I really need to. There is some stuff happening that I take care. Yeah. Right behind that door. Have a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. See ya.